right, you know what it is, man. Unique Mecca Audio, man. This is how we gonna do it. Yo, this joint right here was an after hours club back in like 1980. Everybody used to go right up in here and uh, uh, Starsky, Star Child, Hollywood, you know, all the original before hip hop, before rap records was right up here in this joint right here. Make sure you get the joint so they know where you at. This is this is Sugar Hill. This is where they made the movie. We on Sugar Hill right now. But this here was an after hours club. You see all types of Cadillacs and it was all American cars then before the European car. This when, you know, uh Nicky Barnes, Bat Ross. A lot of a lot of y'all listen never even heard of Bat Ross. But Bat Ross is the one who introduced Floss in the Harlem in my in my words. That's the first person I see. Everything he had was black. He even had like a 633. He had everything black. He had like 10 cars. Everything was black. For me, watching him made me go out and get 30 cars when I hit the crack era. And it all started from right up in here is one of the spots. And around the corner, we got the 404 Club. Willie owned all this. Then he owned the sneaker store right over there. We right up here on St. Nick, man. You ain't going to get better than this. This is Harlem. AZ from right across the street right there. That's AZ building right there. You know what I mean? So this is the heart of Harlem right here. We're in right now. This is Sugar Hill. This up the hill, we're about to go down the hill to uh, 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 Polo Grounds, 8th Avenue, 7th Avenue, you know? But this is what they call Sugar Hill because it's up the hill. It's the hill that come from Frederick Douglass. Is what y'all call it. We call it 8th Avenue. Take you right up here to St. Nick, up here to Sugar Hill. And then the next block up, you got Amsterdam, a part of it. And then you got Washington Heights, it's Broadway, but on the same block. As it, it, New York's so small, everything crammed in, you know? You got Harlem down there on 8th Avenue. Then you got Sugar Hill right here on St. Nick, you know, in Amsterdam. And then you got Washington Heights. And all that is on 145th Street, take you to three different neighborhoods, you know, for three different blocks. But they built everything on top of each other, as you see. We got ready to go down to Polo Ground so you can see what, you know, Harlem really looked like. Welcome to Harlem, man. We get ready to take a tour, show y'all what it's like, you know what I mean? Double the That's a beautiful outfit, though. Look, look who said it. That's where AZ from right over there. You know what I mean? That's where it all started. That papoose over there where the Dunkin' Donuts at. You know, I mean, this is Harlem, man. Willie had the sneaker store right over here. You know, I'm talking about 80, 81, 82. We ain't talking about all this. Everybody want to talk about 88, but 81, 82 is what created, you know, New York City for what the crack era became. We learned how to floss from right up here in Sugar Hill. Yo! Oh, shit! Let's do a promo for both of our joints. I'm with the world famous Sarnetta, this unique. It's a pleasure to meet him. I was in prison when he started this YouTube shit. Everybody give him his props, even when he was going at it, but they cool now with Hassan Campbell. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. Nobody can take it away from man. He started this whole YouTube thing. Y'all gotta pay homage where it's due. Like I bought the strippers in New York. You know what I mean? He bought, you know, the black people to YouTube. The urbanness in New York to YouTube. Thank you, bro. Man, you already know, brother. Me too. This is definitely a legend right here. When he first came home, he automatically started the unity, tried to get online with everybody to bring us back together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what this brother is all about. So I appreciate you, brother. Love and respect, man. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to sit down mm -hmm. and do something more in depth. But just wanted to let them know who we are because they, they ain't never seen me on your platform or you on my well, platform. Well, you're going to be on. I got your number. I you got know? your math. Brother. So, you know, now they know. You know, he talking to the brother about Aboriginal. I mean, yo, I've been, right. been God body since 78 before I could read or write. When, when the brothers had to read the lessons to me and I had mm. to memorize them. And if you didn't memorize them, you got a universal beat down. Either that or move aside, you know what I mean? No doubt. That's Indeed. where it's at. So look forward to get my call, brother. All right, we got it. All right, no doubt. Peace. All right, family, peace. All right. All right, you know what it is, man. Unique Mecca Audio, man. This is how we gonna do it. We gonna talk about what it's like to be loyal. Loyalty in the gang. Loyalty in the street. Loyalty in your crew. Your man get hit, you gotta hit two it is. This how it is. Don't get involved. Cause if you can't stand the heat, don't get involved in the kitchen. Life is hard out here in the street. We trying to get a dollar. We do what we gotta do, busting our It's called but when I love a dog. You know, 
all the kids we left behind. My man getting ready to come down. You know, he grew up with all of them while I was gone for 26. So, you know, they all heard of me, but know me through, you know, through the street. But we're going to take a nice tour. Go through there, go hit the elevators and all that. Jabal used to play, uh, everybody played in here. Kobe came through here, everybody came through here. You know? So Madison Square Garden just got it back last year. So this year they doing something with the NBA, so it's supposed to be even more crazy, you know? Don't they, I don't like about it, they got too much police out here now, you know? They be closing the gate off and have police at every corner, you know? But everybody respect out here, there's never no problems out here, so they don't even need all that, but I guess, the Europeans feel safe for coming here with them. Each floor got a balcony, so that's like having a box office seat. Mm. You know what I mean? Where everybody just stand right up in there, smoke weed, drink, and watch the game from right up there. Mm. But without the binoculars, you know? A lot of basketball careers were started here. This is what, this is what kept all the brothers you know, off the street. Cause everybody come out here and play basketball. Like now you see these kids, if they wasn't out here, you know, they'll be raising havoc around the neighborhood. And the sad part is right across the street from the Rucker, they open up a boys and girls um, club. But these kids ain't even allowed to go in there. And I know the boys and girls told them like me saying it, but they racist over there. You know what I mean? So these black kids don't go in there because when you go in there, it's like going in a fortress, like going in a prison. You know, they got to buzz you in, then they got a turnstile like in the station, then they got, you know, glass booths, then you got people stop you, ask you where you go, who you came to see. Ask a 12 year old kid that just want to get off the street. <laughs> Wait, I mean, come on, man. So it's like, you know, when you go in there, everything locked behind you. So, you know, these kids feel claustrophobic and they can tell they're not welcome because they got all Spanish people running a boys and girls club in a black neighborhood. So what do you expect? Spanish people running a boys and girls club in a black neighborhood and all they want to do is bring the Spanish people down here to the boys and girls club and they do everything to keep these kids down. And these are the same kids that wind up getting recruited into gangs and screwing their lives up, you know what I mean? And you know, it's sad. And they get millions of dollars over there. They got a big state-of-the-art basketball in there, handball, everything. I think they even got a swimming pool on the roof in that joint. But these kids ain't never seen it, man. They never seen it. They grew up here all their life and they're not allowed in the most exp expensive, you know, building, you know, in the neighborhood. It's sad, but it is what it is, you know what I mean? Somebody need to really come in and, you know, do an audit on that and how many black kids they live in. You know what I mean? There's four buildings here, there's another eight buildings in the back, 14 stories high, that's the old Colonial, this is the old Yankee Stadium, we gonna go through there, we gonna get the sign, they still got the sign up. Yeah, it's like none of, none of these kids even know nothing about it. Cause they don't teach them nothing about it and it don't it don't apply to them or well, you know it's just for their parents you know that was lucky enough to dodge the bullet and not get arrested to be able to vote during the next election you know and then you know when giuliani came in he started to join that if uh the child or someone in the apartment got arrested you know for a felony they could put them out the building right now they're offering fifteen thousand dollars to anybody that want to get out the projects. Where you going with 15,000? <laughs> you know what I mean? By the time you pay a realtor and find a spot, that's 10 at least, <laughs> you know? And they're giving them 15,000, you know, to get out, you know? And you know, a lot of them never seen 15,000, so they jump on it and don't know what they are walking into. So it's like, to me, it's like the slavery days when they released the slaves and they didn't even want to leave the plantation. They had nowhere to go. I was in prison with a dude that did 45 years my first time being locked up in Trenton State Prison. They had to throw him out the prison. He was getting released the same day I was getting released. I was so happy to get up out of that joint, you know? And it was an old man sitting there and he said, man, I'm not, I don't want to go. 45 years in that concrete cell and he didn't want to go out in society where they had to physically pick him up and put him on the sidewalk, <laughs> you know? That's like you get a bird in a cage and you let the bird out. Like I caught a duck when I was a kid, you know, in the woods, me and my brother, we caught a duck, you know? Bring the duck back to the crib. 
and we had in a little cage, like a little dog cage in the backyard. My mother saw the duck back there and told us, man, let that bird out. I mean, what you doing keeping it in a cage? You know what I mean? It's supposed to be free. It flies, you know? But, you know, we was excited. We called it duck. We got a pet duck. Mom told us to let the duck out. We let the duck out. It ran around the yard and refused to leave. Kept running around the yard and running back to the cage. You know, it got to the point where we picked it up and threw it up in the air. And it drove flew way up in the air and came right back and went back to the cage. You know what I mean? That's how a lot of these people are. And it's sad. And it's not to disrespect anybody, just what it is. They don't give you no incentive and no motivation to do nothing to go nowhere. So you get comfortable in your cage. And they got it where we lock ourselves in away from each other. Because nobody care about us to come in here to really try and stop the violence. And that's why... You know, me not to brag about it, or, you know, not to glorify it. That's why me myself had a group run out here because they didn't care. They didn't care about nobody out here. I didn't care either. Just keep it 100. I just cared about getting a dollar. You know what I mean? And they didn't care about nothing but, you know, the parents of grandparents that was allowed to vote to be able to go vote for the next congressman in the state, you know, seek representative. You know, and that's what this is all about. You know, you can stay here for two years until the you know next election. You got dudes in here that's paying $150 a month rent. You know what I mean? You know, 70s. And then here we go. You know, they died and it goes over to their kids. Then they died and it go to their kids. And everybody stay here for the rest of their life. And that's what they want. You know what I mean? But the good thing about it is everybody's happy because, you know, this is what we know is happiness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just being here with each other, you know? And a lot of these kids never even been on the airplane, you know? Never even left, you know, Harlem or furthest they went is to the Bronx or Brooklyn, you know? And back into their cell, you know? And it's sad reality, but I'm just breaking it down from what it is from a man that don't travel. You know, it, it, it's sad, man, but it's real, you know? It's real, you know? So just trying to make a change, that's all we're doing. That gray door and that seafood, we had all that, that was a gambling spot right there. You know, that was the number one gambling spot right here. Everybody used to come park right up under here and you know, represent. That was a car lot, but now the car lot done turned into boys and girls club that we get ready to go into. You know? And they used to wash cars right over there where we was at, but now they wash them back here. You know, all this shit changed the 26 years going and coming back. Look at the boys and girls. Look at this big expensive building and the kids over there with old dusty basketball. You know, watch the shit you gotta go through just to get in. probably related to the Spanish people. Mm -hmm. you know? They probably biracial. We have a wait list of about 35 kids. Yeah, yeah so right now it doesn't look like, like we're gonna be open. Um, and then we open up in um, August for summer for after school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they got nothing to do to us till August. Um, no, we have a summer camp, but it's full right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now we're winding down from after school. What's the capacity? Um, we have a capacity is 200 kids a day through the school year, and for the after school, I mean for summer camp is um 80. So how much you got now? Uh, for after school, yeah, um, 160 kids, and register probably have like 700 kids registered. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it holds 200, and you got 160, so yeah. it's 40 open. Uh, no, because it also depending on staffing. So yeah, so if you don't have to staff, I can't bring anyone else to watch kids. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just come get an application. You can come get it. If they're teenagers, they can come in. They can scan in. Um, and then they can register to the, to the QR code. So they can get a QR code, and they can scan the QR code, and they can register to the teenagers. Oh, 
All right. Um, thank you. Don't worry. Anytime. Um, yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Give me one second. Okay. Is this time is it? for me to go and they ain't doing nothing till August and this is June. You know what I mean? By now in June, they'll be in the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? They get a pistol. You know what I mean? So where's the same the youth part of this whole program? You know? Could you get any more racist than this? And mm. you see the way they stopped us at the door? Yeah. Talk about they got to scan the QR code of teenager. So a teenager come in, got to go scan and do all that. You feel like he's going into a prison. You know what I mean? I feel like it's in a prison. Look how empty this shit is. Where did this look overcrowded to you? Look at that. It's it, it, it crowded. Everything closed up there. Look at the 160 kids. Now you hear them going. You're in the kids. Ooh, I got to tell this bird. The Giants. Yeah. Your what? Mecca Audio. Mecca Audio. Years later, they still remember. <laughs> you know, that's what you know. You put a good thing down. <laughs> you know. So where we at? Tell the people where we at. Uh, we're going in building one, through building one at the polo grounds, and we're just gonna go in the middle so you can see what it looked like. You know, so you can see how things really are. You know, welcome to the hood. <laughs> you know, welcome to the hood. <laughs> you know, let them see it. This is the low side. These elevators only go up to the 16th floor, to the second to the 16th. Mm -hmm. The other side goes from the 17th to the 30th. So like when the elevators break down on the high side, we gotta take it from here to the 16th and then go all the way up and then walk up the rest. And this is the high side, to the 17th and 30th. Mm -hmm. You get that, so they see where you at. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we right here. We walking through the project, waiting on you. All right. See, look at this. This some new shit. I ain't never seen this. But I've been home three years and they've been doing construction for three years. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing go up. Nothing new go up. This all that went up. <laughs> you know, the pots. We just left right there. They've been fixing this joint for the longest. But watch when I show you over here, the whole ground started sinking. Cause you know, it's right next to the Hudson. So you, you know how they say like New York gonna, gonna be sinking soon? Well, I'm gonna show you where it already started sinking right here in the polo ground, these big heavy ass buildings on this joint. But like I said, they offered them 15 a piece to get up out of here. Heaven Yo, uh, I'm at the Rucker. All right. Nah, back, back in the day, it was none of, when I went to prison, mm -hmm. there was none of these rails and none of this. We was able to drive our cars through here and pull right up at the building, pick somebody up at the building, drop the groceries off or whatever you do, you know? So you remember the other day they was saying that, right now they're saying that it's like 12 kids was kidnapped in the last 90 days that they don't even want to report on the news. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, the babies ain't even safe out here. You know, look at this. <laughs> From all this shit sinking. But watch over there, you're gonna see where it really so. They've 
been so-called fixing this up since I've been home. I ain't see them do nothing but put up fences. And I can imagine how many millions they're getting just to do this, to act like they're doing something. And that's the first cat that I've seen since I've been home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you imagine how many cats that we eating in the neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They got yeah. cat traps out here. And they tell you that it, 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 it's what they call it? Uh, 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 chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. <laughs> you know? Because they say everything tastes like chicken. And all this right here, all this is new. This way it's sunk. This way the building is sinking in. I used to pull right up here and drive right through all of this to go to any one of these buildings. See, they got a cat right there. I bet you won't see him tomorrow. Somebody be licking their lips tonight. See, all this sunk. All this was flat when I went in 26 years ago. This is how the whole joint just fell apart. Everything fell apart. You know, everything fell apart. But they got all this over here. They show all the kids they got out here. All these kids out here. And the Boys and Girls Club right across the street. Welcome to the rec yard. This the rec yard. You know what I mean? The police open the doors and they let you come out. Except here, you come out when you want, but you police yourself because it's so dangerous that, you know what I mean? Civilians ain't letting their kids and grandkids out. After, after it get dark to come out here. In the daytime, they come sit down out here, you know what I mean? And this is their sense of freedom. This is the wreck, you know? Sit out here a couple of hours and then go back upstairs, you know? But, you know, it is what it is, man, you know? Walk up to the, to, to the real Harlem, you know? Not what they want to show you when they drive by and just catch the buildings looking cute because they, they cleaned up the side facing the street. Then you got the back side like this that look like it's falling off. You know what I mean? Look at this. See how it go up. Look how few and far apart the air conditions are. So that was building one we came through. This is building two. That's building three, 29, uh, 49. And that's building four over there, 29, 91. You know? But let me show you the home plate. Let me show you the home plate. We cut through. Uh, original um, home plate from Yankee Stadium. This where base Babe Ruth hit his 714 home run right here where we walking. Mm. You know, and each one of these buildings is is a base. You know what I mean? Mm. That was supposed to be home base. That was first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Second was building two. You know what I mean? It was building yeah. one. Third base was building two. And then you come over here and you score home. Let's go this way so we get a good view. Millions of dollars came through here. Millions of dollars. All right, go this way, right here. That's the sign right there. That's the home plate, the original home plate they put in the wall of the building. Mm. Make sure you get that so they can read that. This when the Yankees was called the Giants, when Jackie Robinson was playing. Look at the year. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. Look at this. 94, 95, look, these are the years they won. You know, this is the Giants right here. See? New York Mets played here 1992 to 1993. Right here where we standing. This is where the New York Mets played at. I'm sure you colonial in the mm -hmm. None of this was here, but this way it all sunk since I've been gone. And they put up all this other stuff here. You used to pull right up to the building and drop your groceries off. Mm -hmm. Pick your grandmother up, pick your girl up, you know? So now we're going in building four. Same 
Then you got the little side of it. It's crazy, but now you got the colonials back in. None of these fences and none of that was here. We will not be charged for this call. This call is from... This is my man fingers. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. To accept this call, press 5. To block this call, you may begin speaking now. Yo, what up? Nah, we out here filming. We in the polo grounds real quick, so you call right on time. I'm doing a little tour to let them see how things changed since I've been gone. You know, they never expect us to come stand back in these projects that we once ruined, you know? So, you know, now I'm trying to do something, trying to fix it up by bringing spotlight to it. Maybe somebody here and then come in and do something about it, you know? Love. Uh, that's my man, Leonardo Corsico. He from the Poison Clan in Brooklyn. Y'all ever heard of Poison Clan? You know? Poison Clan, that was Jimmy Fingers. He been down from, he was 21, he get ready to turn 50. He got six life sentences. Nah, yeah, he got six life sentences in 300 years, you know? And he trying to chip it down now to come out here. I, I had life plus 20, I done chip mines down and come out. You know, so this is what it is. I talked to John Cuff earlier. You know, he doing what he got to do. I talked to Booby from the Booby Boys. I mean, the, the men still in there fighting to get out and I'm, the, I'm their voice, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just showing them what time it is. You see, you know, real men call. You know what I mean? What they what, what they call the boogeyman. Those are boogeymen. You know what I mean? Locked up for murder, kidnapping, extortion, everything else. You was getting the bag, they was coming to get you. That's what you call a real wolf. Look them up. You know what I mean? The poison clan. All right? <laughs> I've been going so long. Those are babies. That's one of the girls that used to work for me. Daughter. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's family. All those people I walk through there, they all know me. When my man come, he gonna point out who's who. You understand what I'm saying? Because they don't recognize me because I've been gone so long. But I just move like a ghost when I come through, you know what I mean? Because like I said, you know, a dude don't need to blow his own horn. You know what I mean? Yeah, remember, a president don't just say he's president. A king don't just declare king. The people gotta declare you king. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you ain't gotta you know, claim nothing, you know? Like I said, you know, I came over here, used to go over there to Brooklyn and um, Crown Heights and, you know what I mean, that's where it all started at, you know, me and my cousins, you know what I mean, we had the gully posse over there, the shower posse, you know, everybody was over there, you know, the 90s posse and, you know, we did what we did and this is back in the 70s, so everything I learned from over there with them, when I went to jail out in Jersey, I did time in Trenton State Prison, Yardsville, Southern State, you know what I mean, Annandale, High Point. <laughs> you know what I mean? All them spots out there. I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Morton Town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been a few of them spots too. Yeah, you know, just like I'm here, I was in the Bronx. You know, like I said, Brooklyn. We shoot over to the Bronx, but check my homies in the Bronx still holding it down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the Bronx and, and Harlem is one and the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing separating it, but that very bridge right there. That McCoon's damn bridge. You know what I mean? The 40 Fish Street Bridge. You know? Tell them who you are and where you from. Oh, my name is Ali. I'm from Senegal. People call me Buzzing. I play ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long you been in this country? Oh, for like three years. Oh, you just came? Yeah. So you speak Senegal? Yeah, I speak Senegal. Yeah? Let me hear you say something. Say something to the people. Oh, Nangan de Phoenix Yama. Huh? Nangan de Phoenix Yama. How you guys doing? Good, yeah. Oh, you play ball, yeah. basketball? Yeah, I play basketball. Oh, you any good? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. What can you do? You can dunk? I can dunk. I can do anything. I, I wish I had a ball so I could try you out, man. I think I might be able to take you, son. You're a little young for this, man. I'm never, girl, never. I'm 60 <laughs> and I think I can take you. Think so? Yeah, I know. Man, let's go to the court. Yeah. I'm going to take the young boy in the park and work him out, son. I'm going to let you see what 60 look like. You see me on the pull-up ball. Now you're going to see me on the basketball ball. Oh, he running to the court, too. <laughs> he's, trying, yeah, he's trying to really... 
You want me to really come disrespect you on the court? He said, never? He said, I never disrespect him on the court. Come on, man. I'm going to take you over there. He said, he don't think I can rock him on the court. We're going to see what you do with the rock in your hand. So you're going to dunk right now? Oh, you got your Air Force Ones on? Okay, okay. Come on, we're going to get a ball in this hand and see what he's going to do. Okay. Uh, let me see you do something fancy. Let me see you do something fancy. Let me see you do a drawing or something. I'm not about to see right now. You don't know? <laughs> my first shot. I'm going to get your Instagram and when I come in, I'm going to get you. Yeah, take it. You meet back on the way. Where your phone is? Where you stay at? Which building? Uh, like oh, okay, 54. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, Go take a spot. Once you take that spot and you up in it, that means yours now. Can't nobody sell nothing in front of your spot. They sell in front of your spot. Bus shots, bus shots, mean for your kids. So they know if they step on your block, they'll bring you over time. They told me not taking no shorts, but that's the way it goes. This how it is in the real jungle. <laughs> Alright? And in the jungle, you got lions, tigers, bears, and wolves. When the lions and the wolves come out, everything is ready to go crazy. 